Okay, we've previously looked at graphing sine, and now we're going to look at graphing cos, and all the same principles apply to graphing cos. It's just the actual wave itself starts and ends in a different location than what you would normally have for sine. Okay? The wave overall looks exactly the same, but okay, when you go to draw it, okay, you're going to see the, the slight difference in drawing it. Okay. So again, just like I did with sine, I go right to left when I draw these. Okay, so my sinusoidal axis here is at plus one. Okay, so I draw that in. Next up, my horizontal shift. Okay, it's plus 90 degrees. So it means I've gone 90 degrees to the left. Okay, so my wave starts 90 degrees to the left. There it is. Now, I have to say, where does my wave end? I have to look at the number in front of the bracket. That gives me my period. If the number that's here, even though it's not shown, is a 1. Okay, so again, this is period is equal to 360 degrees times the reciprocal of 1. Well, the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Okay, so it's a normal 360 degree period. Okay, so that means I go up 360 degrees from negative 90. That puts me at 270. Okay, so that's the length for one period. So the only thing I have left to do okay, is take into account the amplitude. So what I have to do for this one? Cos is a little different. Okay, your sine wave started on the sinusoidal axis. Okay, the coast wave starts at a local maximum. Okay, so 3 is my amplitude, so I go up 3. That gives me a local maximum. Okay, then we go another 90 degrees over, and I get the next point is right on the sinusoidal axis. Okay. Then I go down to a local minimum. 90 degrees later. Okay, so I have to go down one, two, three. Next point is back on the sinusoidal axis, and we finally finish on a local maximum. So now it's just a matter of connecting the dots. Okay, so there's one iteration of the coast wave. If you want to draw a second one, okay, because these go on forever, there's no, there's been no restriction on the domain here, okay, so it goes on forever in both directions. If I asked you to draw a second iteration of the coast wave, I would just simply throw in another 360 degrees, which would take me up to here, okay, and again draw the coast wave. Okay, so it starts up here. 90 degrees later, it's on the sinusoidal axis. Another 90 degrees later, I'm down here at my local minimum. Then back on the sinusoidal axis, and then finally finishing on a maximum again. And so then I would connect the dots again, and up like this. Okay? And this could you could continue on forever doing this. All right, let's do another example. Let's try this time y equals 2 onto the cos of 2 theta minus 180 degrees subtract 1. All right, and again, quickly the same process. I'm at negative 1 here. Okay, so that's my sinusoidal axis. You draw that in. All right, 
Next up, what's my horizontal shift? Well, I'll subtract 180 degrees, so I go 180 degrees to the right. There we are. Next up, the period. Okay, I have a two out in front here, so that means I take the 360 degrees, multiply it by the reciprocal of two, which is one half. So that means my period is 180 degrees. Okay, so in order to get one full wave in, I need to go over 180 degrees. Okay, there we go. Okay. Again, okay, what I like to do when I'm drawing these is kind of mark off the halfway point on the sinusoidal axis, which is right here, and the two quarters here and here. Okay, just so I give myself reference, whether I've got a period of 180 degrees or a period of 720 degrees, it just makes it easier to have the halfway, the two quarter points kind of marked somewhere on the graph. So I would put like maybe little dashes to give myself reference. Okay. So now we're going to take into account the amplitude of two. Coast starts out at a local maximum, so we go up one, two. There's that point. Okay, we go over to the next quarter point. It's on the sinusoidal axis, so there's the next point. The halfway point, we're at a local minimum, so we go down one, two. There's my local minimum. Three quarters point, I'm back on the sinusoidal axis. And then on the end, I finish with the local maximum again, up one, two. And we connect the dots. So you can see no difference between drawing sine or cos wave. Okay? The only difference in the method that we use to graph it is the fact that okay, a cos wave starts at a local maximum. Whereas when you draw a sine wave, you're starting on the sinusoidal axis, going to a maximum, back to the sinusoidal axis, minimum back to the sinusoidal axis. Okay? So other than that difference, you use the same methodology going right to left.